Hey folks, so I wanted to talk with you about multiple tonguing and I thought I'd start off with the Aratunian Trumpet Concerto because I think for very many young players it's the first piece of repertoire which they really have to dig into double tonguing. And when it comes to triple tonguing, very often it's one or several of Arben's cornet solos. And in some pieces, the multiple tonguing challenges can get a little bit extreme. In fact, I wrote a piece called 016 Fantasy, which I recorded on my magnum opus album. It's quite a challenge uh, for me. Uh, in fact, I wrote it to sort of test myself in developing my, my double tonguing agility. for the quality of that video. It was recorded not even 10 years ago, but it looks like it was recorded maybe 75 years ago. Thankfully, the audio is, is quite intact. Um, but it's been a few years since I played the piece, and it's a goal of mine to work it up again. And so I'd like to document that process in this 100 Days of Practice series. Of course, for most young players, before you start tackling the crazy contemporary repertoire, you're better off conquering the challenges posed by pieces like Aratunian and Arvin's cornet solos. And really the biggest mistake that most people make is they just practice too fast. It's understandable why that happens. I mean, we learn to double tongue and triple tongue so we can play fast. But what's often lost on young players is that while it's easy to play fast, it's not so easy to sound good while double tonguing and triple tonguing. So what do we do? Well, I'm sure you've guessed it. We have to slow things down. Let's go back to the Arben's book, page 155 in the old edition, page 189 in the newer edition. Those really basic patterns with triple tonguing. I like to do it single tongue, K tongue, and triple tongue back to back, trying to match the sound of my single tongue very slowly. And of course, you'll find some very similar exercises for double tonguing on page 175 of the old edition of the Arvins and page 214 of the new edition. The goal of this type of practicing is all about achieving consistency and emulating the quality of your single tongue. Because let's face it, we probably all sound best when we're single tonguing at a comfortable tempo. So we should expect our K tongue, double tongue, triple tongue, to sound the same as our single tongue. So when you feel like that's really starting to work, you simply increase the tempo and soon enough you'll approach the expected tempo for double and triple tonguing, but you'll be really pleased with the better quality and consistency of your sound. Of course, these principles can and should be applied to repertoire as well. So take the Artuni Concerto again. Um, if you're having trouble with one of the 16th note passages, isolate it, slow it down, and do it slurred. And when that's smooth and consistent, do it single tongued. When you're satisfied with that, do a K tongued. And now, if you can make it sound pretty good K tongued, it's probably going to be dynamite double tongued. Of course, now you're ready to double tongue the passage, but keep it very slow and gradually speed it up. So, I'm sort of doing a condensed version of that process here, but take your time with it. Of 
course, that final gesture of the first allegro section, the ascending 16th note passage up to the high B flat, can trip people up quite easily, so it deserves similar treatment. Slurred, single tongue, K tongue, double tongue slowly. Of course, the same approach to practice will work with triple tongue. So take that variation from Carnival of Venice. Let's say I've already gone through it slurred, so now I'm going to do it single tongue, K tongue, and triple tongue very slowly. So there's all that slow practice, and of course, you need to find the medium tempo practice as well and to perfect the sound and your approach before getting to full tempo. So once you're in this slow, careful practice mode, it's all about getting everything back into context. You have to get the larger passage in the context the entire movement, the entire piece, and sometimes that means playing all of it very slowly and gradually speeding it up. So one final tip I'd like to offer is that you should never be afraid to go back and practice these passages very slowly, even after you've worked them up to tempo. This kind of practice will deepen your muscle memory and your confidence with the most difficult passages you have to play. I use this all the time and I found it to be a great help. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you find some of these tips helpful for your own practice or for your students. And I wish you happy multiple timing.